What's going on guys? Vic VP back with the Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're going to be unboxing somebody's V-Pin that came from Illinois. Basically said, hey Vic man, I have a V-Pin. It desperately needs an upgrade. Can you help me out? Yes, it was sent like this. We're going to unbox it, unwrap it live to make sure and see if anything got damaged in transit. I'm excited. Let's take a look. Yeah. Let's see, can you see me? Yep, there you go. <laughs> all right. Again, if you don't know my whole intro, my whole spiel, be sure to follow me on all the socials at Vic underscore VP, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. What are you waiting for? Be sure to follow everything. You would have seen my personal upgrade the Simpsons Virtual Pinball Party went from a 50 inch, 60 hertz Samsung three years ago, did a couple of updates. Now it is running a 42 inch C3 OLED. Major, major upgrade. If you haven't seen those videos, be sure to take a look. But on this one today, somebody sent me their VPN that needs some help. My knees are killing me. <laughs> Alright, now if you don't know how I work or how I am, yes, this is a video unboxing something that somebody sent to me. I always, anytime somebody sends me a cabinet, I always forever get my camera out, whether it's my phone cam or the regular camera there, and I record everything from the moment the truck pulls up to the moment that it is dropped in my garage here. I record everything. As you see right now, yes, this came from Illinois. Illinois to New York. I was honestly surprised at the price that the customer paid as far as shipping. My other thing is I don't know what the cost is going to be going back. Customer covers all that. He paid for the shipping to me. He will pay for the shipping back. Again, this video right here, I'm going to give you an overview. We're going to talk about what exactly to expect with this here again my main reason for this video is to unwrap it unbox it live this way if something falls apart once i take these straps off you'll know it wasn't me <laughs> i know it sounds weird it's you know i like to you know, i'm joking around i'm hoping i am but you would be very 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 surprised at uh some stuff that happens in transit even before I unwrap this right here, I'm actually gonna show you like, I'm gonna take the camera in my hands, we're gonna go, not selfie mode, but I'll put you in my hand. And uh, just to show you this, um, you know, there is like dust on this. It's, uh, you know, I don't know if that, if he sent it like that, I don't know. There's a lot to it, but basically the ultimate end goal of this, this right now is running some really old, I would assume it is an overseas V-pin. I'm not talking about those Aussies. This is probably dated. This is running a Pinball X or Pinball Y. And the customer basically has some complaints. You know, video, ball, stutter. He wants some newer games and such. Uh, and he asked me for help. And I said, honestly, in this situation, the best thing is, yes, send me the cabinet. Now, keep in mind though, this is a gamble. Depending on what the customer wants right now, he did see my 42 inch C3 OLED. He may want that in this cabinet. I don't know if it's gonna fit in this cabinet. There is a lot. My wheels are turning. There's a lot to discuss, but first we're gonna unbox it live and then we'll talk about how the customer got me and then the plans for the future. Let's do it. All right, let's take a quick close look. Again, I have yet to unbox this. Normally, yes. Whenever a freight company drops something off like this, I usually like to unwrap it and all, but you know, these freight delivery guys, they do not care. Uh, they have no patience. They go, I gotta go right now, sign off on this. Basically in this situation, it is what it is. This is exactly how this came to me. Again, I just wanna kinda show off this, like this state in transit, I don't know, this is here. But again, I just wanna show off like, you can see that there is like dust on this. Again, I don't know if the customer sent it like that, but yes. Uh, again, it is what it is. It's on a pallet. A uh, guy bought in the, the pallet jack and such, and here we are now. Again, I usually like to see, you know, luckily cardboard was covering corners, but this is fairly, there's fairly a lot of play on this. 
this one here still fairly a lot of play again just doing a quick walkthrough you know right now if there's a gash inside of the cabinet i on the side of it there's really no way else to see it so this again came just like it is i'm gonna unbox it and essentially this right here will go up on a table yes as you can see i don't have any motorized lifts obviously this i will do it either alone or i'll have my neighbor help me out i don't think it's that heavy but again right now let's just get it unwrapped all right so just sort of quick kind of walk around and such let's take the time now we're gonna release the straps and we are going to unwrap it so while i do this i'll kind of give you i might be recording i didn't even spin the camera <laughs> let me spin the camera like i mentioned in my last video i got a new camera so i can actually see myself i'm in frame and all that awesome so uh, again, I'll kind of go through what the scenario is here. Uh, basically, customer hit me up. He goes, hey, Vic, man, I have this V-pin. Uh, is there something that you could sell me kind of aiming towards drive-related? Something plug and play? Can you sell me a drive that basically I can just plug it into this and it'll just work and I'll have all the updated tables? And I always say no. Whether it's pinball, whether it's arcade, I do not sell drives. They will never be plug and play. I'm firm on that. You might have some people, might have some sellers that will sell you a plug and play drive. You deal with that. I, I just don't deal with it. Then, like I said, I'm going to pull up my phone and we'll go through exact wording and such. Again, my main focus right now is to unwrap this. And number one, make sure it's intact. And then again, at the end of the video, we'll talk about everything else. But again, even he sent me pictures of it being shipped and wrapped like this. And I did mention to him, I said, I'll be honest, dude, you might want to, I mean, I usually like to crate it. Usually I like to have all, you know, four walls and the top five walls crated and protected. You can see there, this cellophane wrap, I don't know if this was in the rain. Uh, so... There's a lot, there's a lot in my mind going on, <laughs> but it seems, it seems all right inside. And again, I'm gonna talk about everything, what his plans are. He's actually got a couple of things that looks like he tried to update and upgrade on his own. Okay, my main focus right now is we're gonna unbox this and we're just gonna see if there's any gashes and such. No legs that came with it. That's why we have to put this on a table. Not bad. Again, I purposely do this on camera. I'll take you around and such. I do this on purpose. Freight companies and all that, you'd be surprised. They have pallet jacks. They got forklifts. You, a fork could have went right through the side of this. Um, but in all honesty, it looks good. It looks okay. It looks intact. It looks like, again, like I said, this is definitely like a V-pin overseas most likely maybe a china brand off i don't know it says here virtual pinball uh, i'll try to take a dig you know closer maybe there's some details inside the pc and all that but it does look like he tried to do some stuff on his own gonna take it with my hand we're gonna walk around the cabinet and then i'm gonna put it on the table all right so here we go we got the virtual pinball again just take a look at the sides seems okay it looks like he has a lockdown bar here so you can kind of see the artwork vinyl gets there we have here a corner looks like vinyl is coming off here again there's a lot of plans on this there's definitely scuffing here so see this is exactly why i want to record so we do have a little bit of vinyl there nothing major but again i'm doing this to protect myself i don't want to hear hey vic uh, I sent this to you without this ripped, and uh, that's not really my fault. But we do have here some you know, buttons. They spin. You got a plunger here. Unique plunger there. I'm gonna take a look at the other side again. I'm right now just focusing on the cat on the cabinet itself. Again, same thing. Vinyl here. Looks like he has a back box hinge here. Not too bad. Let's go again. This side looks better. I mean, the other side, there was a couple of things here, but again, don't know if that's how it came. And then we have the rear here. We got two fans here. 
and such. All right, I'm gonna lift it up, we're gonna put it on the table. All right, pretty cool. Got it all off the pallet. It's, it's not awfully heavy. Uh, I was able to do it myself. Again, you can literally see there that you can just pick this up. Might as well take a look at the bottom real quick and kind of see it. Nothing major going on here. You do have a fan here. Looks like a main power switch. And there's also a PC computer switch. It's actually got these nice, unique rubber feet. Basically to keep it up. That back rear right one is not there. Uh, so it's not on the floor. Probably means that you didn't send it to me. But basically there's a couple of things definitely that intrigued me. You know, while he messaged me, I was like, oh, you know, this is going to be a cool kind of experience if you really want to, you know, use the terminology like that. Um, again, I don't know where this came from. Basically, definitely, it's it's a pre-made V-pin. It was running at, uh, pinball X, pinball Y. I'm going to probably connect it to, like, my TV here just to see, like, the insides. But the thing that really caught me was that he actually bought the Cleveland software design kit for this. Uh, I guess he wired it because it's all wired up. Um, he did write in the Facebook Messenger, he goes, hey, uh, you know, it does work, everything works, but he basically just wanted a better experience. So again, I don't know how dated this is. Definitely we're gonna look at the computer because that has a graphics card called Galaxy on it and I've never seen that. Uh, I did mention to him that we are gonna need a new computer, so that's gonna be on the cost too. There's a lot going on, my mind right now is racing. My main thing is at least it's here, we have it here, and this is like a perfect prime example. I'm gonna bring you in close, and this is the big thing where, this is the same exact situation scenario, right? This guy has a cabinet, but once I get this cabinet in my hands, I could really tell you like a price estimate. Right now, look at, He's got regular micro switches for your flipper and your magnet saves. Is that a big deal? To me it is. You shouldn't really feel an actual physical click on pinball. This plunger setup is mind boggling. Uh, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. Let's take you close, let's take a look really at the inside. So just again, I would put you in my hand but I'd rather just kind of point stuff out. Again, I've, I've heard of Cleveland software design I haven't done research on them. Uh, you don't see me, but that's okay, I don't care. Um, you know, I haven't done too much research. The only thing that I see is that basically it's a very friendly plug and play solution. So that is great for the community. It's awesome. This does have a pin one main zero one board. So this whole heart right here is from Cleveland Design. So we have that. Um, again, I'm not sure who would have wired it. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. Again, I, he does have two, four, five. Yeah, he's got the 10. It's the 10 solenoid kit from Cleveland Software Design. Um, he does have SSF. Uh, it looks like only two fronts. And he's got the two base here. He's got a matrix here, which in all honesty, I mean, again, this is where I, I have to talk to the customer. You know, this right here, I would definitely add more. I would add more LEDs. We have a lot of space for more LEDs. I'm not sure how he likes the placement, uh, but it is what it is. Again, this does also have these LED side rails here. Again, I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming that Cleveland also did the LED, the, the rails. If they did, pretty cool. Nice little uh, touch. Um, I mean, I would assume so. There's a whole board here. This is a very interesting board. I can't see the name of this board, but yeah. I'm definitely anxious to see the PC on this. We have a, what is that? Parts side? There's a lot. <laughs> My mind is, is, is looking at this. There's a lot, there's a lot going on. Um, it is what it is though. Listen, that this is what the challenge I wanted and this is what it is. Uh, yeah, oh he does, look, there's actually a, another, oh he's got four. It's not placed correctly, but I would assume that he has these placed like this because of wire length coming, oh there's a lot of slack on this. He could have definitely went 
My mind is racing. <laughs> my mind is racing. I'll probably put you in my hand real quick because this plunger, that's got to go. Not to mention though, it's difficult. I can't really say that. The plunger is not cut out like a regular, you know, real pinball plunger. It doesn't have the V cut. It's just a circle. There's a lot. There's a lot. Let me put you in my hand. Let's take a quick closer look and let's talk. All right, so here we go. In hand, customer had the key inside, so that's awesome. You kind of see there. Again, this is definitely one of those Chinese coin doors. Um, you know, this is like the one that needs power and all that. Uh, it's got a nice little coin box. And then you do have audio here. Um, uh, again, nothing's labeled. So I'll probably have to make labels on it. This is actually Velcroed down. I'm surprised that stayed intact there. Oh, these are the these are the audio amps I use on like the buy VIX for like for example the time crisis cap. Uh, again, take a look at the plunger here. Again, you have your start button. I guess this is directional. Definitely, again, like I said, this is an overseas. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it. It's probably a Chinese V pin cab, uh, and he's just trying to update it. We'll take a closer look. Again, you got your ten solenoid kits. I'm gonna give you my honest review on Cleveland. Um, it is what it is. Listen, he's making something great that's plug and play. Do I like this layout? No. Do I like the solenoids? No. That's really why you're going to see me talking about that right there soon. That is another 42-inch C3 OLED with 24-volt uh, contactors on that. So we're gonna. it's going to be a good video. We're going to be able to compare and all that. We're not trying to say this is better than that. I'm just going to give you my personal professional opinion uh, you know, building V pins and all that. I'll give you my honest opinion and such. Again, you could see your amps here. Again, you got two big subs there. I mean, wiring is wiring. So definitely the big thing that people need to really recognize right now. This, all of this, I would be, this would all be cleared out. This all needs to be rewired. 100,000%. I'm not going to cut corners. I don't work that way. All this has to be rewired. This all has to go. So a lot of people that send me this cabinet go, oh, Vic, it's just quick. It's already wired. No, it's not. This right here is a, is a wiring rat's nest. <laughs> you got power supplies up the wazoo. Got a lot of power supplies here. Again, I would assume this is Cleveland stuff. Again, we're going to do an honest, an honest opinion on it. Again, you can kind of see the PC here. Again, look at that graphics card. Nothing like a beautiful Galaxy. <laughs> Again, I'm going to most likely boot this up. No TVs came with this and no back box. I'm going to talk about that later on. Um, at least you got some fans. So that's all good. Again, this is the board here for this LED matrix. From where I'm standing, I can't see any names for it. I'll definitely look up like Cleveland, see if he has any, uh, you know, boards like that. There's another amp there. You got power bricks there. I mean, listen, it's not too bad. This right here looks like it's... Uh, uh, it's definitely MDF. Uh, yes, this is this is MDF here. Not too heavy, honestly, but you can kind of see we're basically trying to modify. It's a, we're modding a cab. That's it. Again, I'm I'm pretty interested to see this. Again, though, I do make a big point. This again, LED side rails, the addressables, very cool. This one though is actually, I mean, I personally have mine on a 45 degree angle, but you could see bare LED, which I'm personally not a fan of. Same thing here. I'm going to most likely make him a custom plexiglass cover. And yes, again, we're going to be, we'll talk about the ideas and all that. You can see there, another thing there. That I would assume is from stock. Because that looks like a Jamma board. <laughs> it is. It's, it looks like a Jamma board connection. Uh, again, it is what it is. We can see the rear. The rear's got a swinging door too. Power input there. Yes. Back box, traditional back box with the holes in the middle of it. Cool. Yes. Now, let's put you guys down. Let's talk about some plans. All right, this is this is pretty cool. I'm trying to figure out where to stand. I like to stand next to the cabinet, but you also could see the next upcoming build there, which is going out to one of the four musketeers, Brad D's brother. He reached out to me and he's getting a 42 inch C3 OLED V pin with the works. 32 inch back glass and I believe it's either, a, I think it's a 15, 15, 17 or 19 inch DMD. I'm drawing a blank on that, excuse me on that. But it's kind of cool. This is actually kind of crazy. It's like, it's like history repeating itself. 
Uh, if you go back, there was a point where I basically had three V pins going on at one time. We had the Hogwarts pin, the Star Trek pin, and then there was another pin. I'll talk about that in a separate video. There was another pin in the background. And uh, there's a reason why there's no video that came out for that. But this is kind of reoccurring. Uh, almost same as that situation. I did my Simpsons pin. We got Brad D's pin. Brad D bro. And then we have this pin here. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's kind of crazy how stuff like comes full circle. Now let's go back to this customer right here. Let's start with the basics. Let's talk about the first message I get. Here's what I got. He goes, I would like to update my computer and my monitor to be able to play games in 4K on my pinball machine. Could you help me with this? I have seen some videos on how I could do it. I was thinking that maybe you could send me a PC program just to change the existing. So I got that I got that message on Facebook Messenger. I understood what he wants. He has a VPN. He wants basically a new computer. Off the bat, I, I automatically kind of shoot it down. There's just, it's not a simple swap. So think of it in this situation. Those are the exact words, okay? You could kind of join me in my mind and kind of figure out like, oh, you know, let me put myself in Vic's mind and what is, what's going through his mind. Number one, he's looking for a new computer, okay? The way all this is, it's not really something that you could copy and paste. Not to mention, he might not know what to copy and paste. Not to mention, he wants newer 4K stuff. I'm, I'm very anxious to see what this computer is even outputting. I'm pretty sure it's 1080p. Uh, maybe it's 30 hertz. There's just too much. There's too much going on in this scenario to just say, hey, I need a new computer. Can you just send me a new computer? There's, there's, as you can see, I'm not the type of trying to rip people off. I'm gonna go, yeah, that's easy. Give me X amount and I'll just send you, I don't do that, I go very in depth. If you ever messaged me, if you ever had the option or, or I should say like the opportunity to message me and I reply, which I always do, you'll see I'm, I'm very straightforward. I'm not gonna BS it, I'm not gonna sugarcoat stuff. I'm gonna basically ask what exactly you're looking for and then from there we work like that. That's how it is. But again, I basically got the message of, hey, I wanna update. Then he sent me pictures of his actual pin. He sent me a picture of the computer case from the rear door. And off the bat, I could already tell you, I was like, oh, this is definitely one of those Chinese overseas virtual pinball cabinets. And it was running uh, Pinball X or Pinball Y. So once I see like Pinball X, Pinball Y, I could already tell you, I'm like, oh, this is definitely, definitely dated. Uh, yes, Pinball X and Pinball Y is still being used. It's kind of like your argument with Hyper Spin and Launchbox. Uh, it's just... I don't know Pinball X, I don't know Pinball Y, so that all has to go. That's, that's, that's number one, that's all gotta go, so I can't help in that situation. In all honesty, with what he was looking for, he could just go out and get a new computer. But, you know, I'm pretty sure he wants more help than that, and again, it's not a simple copy and paste thing. I'm more anxious than kind of surprised if all the solenoids worked with the existing computer. Um, I mean, I could, I could, I'll probably, I haven't loaded up, but I would probably bet that this is probably running visual pinball like eight or seven. Uh, again, I will do that though. I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to plug it in. So, um, he, I wrote there, I wrote there, it looks like an old system. Uh, he goes, yes, it's a very old system. I want to update it myself. How can you help me? Uh, I wrote there, it looks like a virtual pin on the inside, but, um, Virtual pin is actually much cleaner uh, than this. Again, I'm talking like, um, if you go back on my shorts a while back, I went and I fixed, I should say revived somebody's virtual pin. Um, it's a, I'm sorry, it was a V-pin cab. A V-pin cab, that's what it was. I, had a, I helped them revive it, it was dead. Uh, and I revived it, and this right here, it just brought me back memories of that. And I was like, this is most likely gonna be the same situation where it's a VP cab. But this right here is not VP cab. The VP cab was much, um, I'm not gonna use the word, I don't wanna say the word nicer. Uh, but the V pin, the VP cab was more, I don't know how to, to word it. <laughs> so he did ask me, hey Vic, how much do you think it's gonna cost me to update it? I said, honestly, like, and it's, it's, this is the exact thing. I said, honestly, man, I can't give you a number. I don't know what's on the inside of this thing. I don't know who, why, I, this, this, I can't give you a number on this. 
Imagine if I said to you like, okay, it's gonna be like 500 bucks, which it's not. Cause the PC alone is not gonna be 500 bucks. Not to mention the price I gave this customer, I didn't include the PC. He's gotta buy the PC, meaning I'll go out and buy it and he's gotta pay for it. So I, 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 my pricing on this, I basically saw an opportunity, number one, to help revive. Number two, to also take a look at this Cleveland uh, software design. Will I ever use Cleveland software? No, I know how to do my wiring and all that. I, I, know, I know my stuff. So I would never be using Cleveland, but this is a perfect opportunity, something that builds V-pins like myself, to be able to kind of compare it and such. I don't even know how much this, this Cleveland software design kit is. Right now, to be brutally honest, and again, I've, I've been around only one pin. Again, it's that VP catch. You go back to my story, I'll probably post it in the description. You go back to that short. That VP cab had the 12 volt car starters that are in this, just like this Cleveland design. Again, granted though, you're talking an old unit. We're talking like, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old unit versus what these new car starters are. It's just car starter and 12 volts for like solenoids. It just gives me a bad taste. I don't like it. I'd rather put 24 volts uh, on that, especially again with me owning real pinball machines. It's uh, it's a different clack. That's really the best way to say it. So he sent me a picture. He goes, I just installed this. Oh, he actually sent me this. Let's see it real quick. Um, wow, he's actually got a couple of things. Hang on. So I got pictures. The first thing he bought was a high powered SSF kit. That was $400. He got a starter kit with up to 10 solenoids starting at 255. So he didn't pay 255. He just sent me screenshots. And then he's got a virtual pinball builders kit from 640. So these aren't actual receipts. This is basically just screenshots of Cleveland design. Um, again, Cleveland design is doing something great for the community where a lot of people want plug and play. That is what they did. It's expensive. I won't sugarcoat it, it is expensive, but you do have the beauty of everything pre-wired, pre-done. You can literally do what this guy did. You drill it to the sidewalls. Again, I'm gonna give you my, my pros and cons to it, but again, we're right now just going over like the text and all that. Uh, I mentioned to him, I said, listen, I personally, I would sell this cabinet and then look into a newly built one. Um, again, right now, I didn't measure it, but we could take a quick measurement. This, I can't say it. I was going to say this looks wider than that. So I would assume it would fit a 42, but I can't say that. I have to actually measure it. So he was thinking about selling it. Then he goes, you know what? I, I just, I want to, I want to revive this. Uh, he wrote there, it seems to me that the kit, which is installed works well, but what I would like is to see better image quality on the gaming table. So he doesn't like. I'm pretty sure it was a 1080p, a probably 30 hertz screen and such. So I said to him that the better quality is not only related to the PC, it's also related to the screen. So you now have to change the screen. You can't use that existing screen if you want 4K. I highly doubt his PC did 4K or that screen could take 4K. Um, I thought I was gonna do something simpler like buy a monitor for six to $700 and a PC between 1,000 to 1,500 he wrote, I think I have a lot to learn. Yes, again, on sale, the C3 OLED 42 inch, like I put in my Simpsons cabinet, that right now, it's no longer on sale. I think it's 1100 bucks. I paid, uh, what did I pay, 799 or 899 Don't quote me exactly, but you can see there a monitor, the screen alone, you want a good screen, you're gonna have to pay for it. And yes, I'm talking 120 hertz. Doesn't have to be OLED, but the 120 hertz, 144 hertz, you wanna talk about the Asus or whatever, they, it's, it costs money. Then again, like I said, the PC, you do need a good PC for it. Now imagine, um, this is what I wanna make a point on. Imagine if I sold him a PC that outputs 4K, he puts it into this and he goes, Vic, where is the better image quality? It ain't there, because your screen cannot do better image quality. Your screen can only do 1080p, I would assume. From the pictures, he didn't send me a picture of the monitor, uh, but everything is like decased. His like back box, the 32 inch, it's like decased. So I can already tell you that it's definitely, it's not gonna be 120 hertz on this and, and, and such. 
Now again, in the midst of us talking a lot, I told him about my pins. I always, I now, you'll see, you know, if you go back to the Simpsons video, um, I really have to shoot that and then I'm shooting this before that. So I don't know when it's gonna be exact, it's gonna be released exactly, but basically I now strongly recommend a 42 inch V pin built. Again, I'm saying that, yes, uh, my original pin was 50 inches and ah, oh, Vic, what? Uh, now that I own two real pinball machines, Jersey Jacks, even if they were Stearns, the 42 inch is a standard body uh, pinball dimension. My 50 inch was four to five inches wider than a wide body, so it was wide. Uh, basically, what am I getting at? I bought my real pins and I didn't touch my V pin, mostly because it was just a different arm length and I, it was a turn off, I didn't like it. But now I'm always strongly suggesting 42 inch. Go with the 42 inch. So I was telling them the details about my pins. This one right here, my Simpsons pin, 42 inch C3 OLED, 32 inch back glass. My personal pin has a 22 inch DMD, and this one right here is a 17 inch DMD. So he likes this. I also told him the newer stuff on VPX, you know, 10.8, Dungeon, uh, Darkest Dungeon, Futurama. You got a lot of tables now, the newer stuff that's coming out that utilizes a full 16 by nine screen as the DMD. His setup here, he had a back box. It had a 32 inch, which I would assume was a 32 inch, but he actually had a real dot matrix. And the one thing I do kind of feel bad about, and he's actually sending it to me, I feel really bad that he didn't send me the back box with this. Um, I told him the specs on that, and then he went and bought, uh, I sent him the link to that uh, DMD, he actually bought it. Uh, and then he sends a picture of it to me, which I'll kind of put here. And he goes, hey Vic, this doesn't fit my back box. And I go, I, of, it's, of course it's not gonna fit. You, we have, you, have to, you have to fix the DMD panel now. Your, your DMD is a one fourth, one fourth ratio. Now we're going to 16 by nine. Um, so I, he told me he's gonna send it via UPS. In all honesty, in that situation, I already told him, I'm most likely gonna have to build a new back box, 100%. I'm not a fan of modifying the back, that, that piece of wood that's there. It will definitely crumble, it's, it's, it's not doable. But I, again, I'm right now talking, and this is just exactly how it went. Um, you know, some people might argue, they might go, Vic, why, you know, why send this cabinet? Listen, the, the cabinet is the cabinet. It's a decently built cabinet, can't knock it. Um, only thing though, I'll be honest, it's going to be tough is, you know, putting the TV in. I would assume his glass goes in this chest. There's a lot. There is a, there's a lot. Is he saving a lot of money? Yes. I mean, I wouldn't, now you're going to say like, how much is a lot? I, I should actually, I can't really say yes or no. Again, people right now, you're going to see this. You saw how this cabinet is. I right now, I'm looking at this and this is a wiring mess and I can't sleep now. I won't be able to sleep. This all has to come out. I have to be careful though when I take this out because for example, like these coin doors that need power and all that, I have to make sure I have all the, the wires labeled and stuff. This has a unique kind of holder for the TV mount, but it looks like it was modified. This was originally in a place. It looks like it was here and then he actually took it off. There's a lot, my mind is racing right now. Welcome, welcome to my world. Now again, in the midst of you know messaging back and forth, he goes, Vic, uh, what, what freight company do you use? He used my freight company, which is ABF. Uh, not, I'm honestly surprised. He only paid about 400 to 450 bucks uh, to ship this. Granted though, if you look very carefully though, it, it wasn't crated. So the weight, it, I'll be honest, this was a gamble and I'm surprised, it, it's, I'm glad it's here. Um, you know, me personally right now, when I ship this back, I will most likely do the same thing. I kind of like to keep the PCs in the case um, but I usually remove the graphics card. This way in transit, it, it doesn't break. I'll probably lay the graphics card and such. There's a, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. I honestly probably might want to try to reinforce and crate it when I send it out. Um, he did ask me if I had a suggestion for the TV. Maybe I'll just go, well, I, could, I, I don't, I should say, I should rephrase that. Um, the other two builds that I've done, for example, Hogwarts that went to Canada, I had the TV in it. I don't mind shipping a TV and a V-pin because it's kind of like locked in. So um, in this situation, I'm hoping that I could put a C3 OLED and I'll tell you exactly what's gonna happen right now. I'm gonna wire this. 
this cab right here, Brad's brother's cab, will most likely be done. And I'm going to basically use the screens on his and then configure everything kind of like just outside of this cabinet, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, that's most likely what is going to happen. I'm most likely going to finish this cabinet before Brad D's. Brad D's bro right now, honestly, it's nearly complete. I'm just doing artwork and then I got to get the TV and the computer. And then that's a whole nother realm. This is how I work. Wiring is like the main thing. That's what takes the time. And again, I'm very happy with how I am, especially with how, you know, how long I've been doing this. Wiring, I've definitely cleaned up my wiring a lot. So it looks like it originally started like this. <laughs> my wiring was originally like this and now it's just much cleaner and such. So I do take my time. It's, you know, again, it's quality over quantity. So there you go. I mean, that's the plan right now. Uh, I just want to make sure I'm talking about everything. I'm going to now real quick. Again, I haven't. I haven't played this Cleveland thing. I'm honestly probably gonna boot up the computer and I'll just put it to that TV uh, just to see exactly what we're dealing with. But this Cleveland setup, I don't like it. Yes, but keep in mind, like, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep saying it. This was designed to be plug and play. I just don't like that all 10, all, there's five solenoids here, five stars and five stars here. They're so close together, but again though, that might not really be Cleveland's issue. That might be the customer that did it like this. I'm a fan of, on the walls, I usually have uh, three. There's the rear right, the middle right, and then the flipper, right flipper. That side is left flipper, left middle, left rear. But then I actually put boards going across for the slingshots and then the middles. This setup, even with Cleveland, it's not, it's not really set up like that. Um, they're, they're, uh, what's the wording I want to say without offending him? Uh, let me take you in close. So let me, let me explain. Good. You can see me. Awesome. So now take a look at this, right? This is the right side here, right? We have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. There are five separate solenoids. So essentially, yes, in VPX. In DOF, you know, this is probably set to the right flipper. This is probably set to the right sling. They will go off at different times, but the placement of this, it's, it's no different. There's, there's no difference. I could basically assign right flipper and right slingshot to, this, to one solenoid, if that makes sense. That's why I don't, I don't like this. The way I do mine, it's they're, they're, they're very spaced out. So you could actually feel and hear a difference. This right here, if I was playing, I wouldn't know if this one fired off or this one. It's too close. Oh, Vic, he didn't do it right. This should be in the rear. It still doesn't really matter. These are, these are at least separate. I would assume this right here is flipper and, sol and, uh, and slingshot. But it's just too close. I don't like it. So now what, what am I going to do, Vic? What are you going to do? I'm going to offer it to the customer. I'll tell them, listen, I'll wire this. I'll set this up like I would. I'll put the flipper. I usually put the flipper right, right, very close to the button. So a flipper would really be, I would move this. This is just in the way. I don't know what this is. This has to go. This again, though, like I mentioned before, this looks like it was originally here. See that cutout? I don't know if you can see that. There's an actual like hinge. That's supposed to be here. You see this, these two, this is supposed to be here. I would put the flipper, I always put a solenoid right under the flipper. This way, when you hit the flipper button, it, it, it hits your palm. You will feel that solenoid. So flipper is always right next to the button, number one. Number two, surround sound, ball roll. Your palm, you want to feel it. I always put that very close to the button as well, slash lower. So your palm feels it. The rear, it really should be up here. It should be up higher. Ball roll isn't down below, it's, it's up here. Um, then slingshots, perfect example. Slingshots are right here in the middle of the, of the, of the play field. I put a board here, I should, I, I'll just take it to Brad's, <laughs> just take it to Brad's pin. Let's take it to Brad. <laughs> All right, there you go, I was just saying, I'm over here, I'm over here wording it, I might as well just show it to you. Again, this is Brad D. Bro's pin. Again, yes, this is clean wiring to me. I still have, I mean, this is still being worked on, but this is, this is how I do my stuff. But we're gonna take a look real quick though at the actual solenoids. I have 10 solenoids in this. But you can see here, look at this. This is left flipper, right as close as possible 
to the actual button, to your actual, you know, flipper button, okay? You don't see it visibly, but right here, there's two separate solenoids. These are slingshots. This is where visually, when you're playing your V-pin, the slingshot is visually here. Then you have right here, see that? That's a big space, look at that space, see that? That's almost like a foot, foot and a half of space. So I could tell when this one fires off. So same thing, you got your uh, center left, there's another one right here that's center middle, there's one right here, you can't really see it, center right. Now in the rear, look at that. Look at how far that is, rear left to the middle. That's how far, that's where it should be. Now you got your rear center, and then your rear right. You might not be able to see it, but there is there. That right there, this setup right here, you could tell when this one goes off versus that one. In the Cleveland one, again though, granted, you could, which is what I will do, you could remove the starter and then, you know, now you're gonna make your wires longer. So, you could do that. But this is how, you know, if you look at the Bible, Mr. JNet, this is how his stuff is set up. And that's how I always build my stuff. I mean, that's really it. As far as like the Cleveland thing, it's cool. Believe me, it's definitely awesome what he's doing. Apparently you just put a cabinet XML file and you're set. Um, but you know, I see this, I gotta, I gotta extend this. This is pretty thick wire. This is a good 18-2 wire here. So you got everything at least nicely set. Again though, 12 volts. The, the, the solenoids you see all over there, those are 24 volts. It is a, it's a huge power difference. It's two times the power. Um, big thing that people are commenting on is the board. His boards here are very good apparently. That's pretty cool. Um, it goes into this pin one board, which is pretty cool. There's a lot, there's a lot going on, but uh, you know, my mind is racing. Me personally, like I said, I could take this, I'm gonna use his board still, but the way I would do this, I'm not, oh, this is, uh, oh, I could remove this, yeah. So this actually, he's got it set up kind of like I do a flathead. You take a flathead and then I could basically just run new 18-2. And uh, yeah, you could do it like that too. But before I even do that, I would have to figure out like what, you know, what one is the flipper, what one is the slingshot. There's a lot. You got a lot of also power supplies going on. There's a lot of power supplies. Whereas you can saw on mine, there's three that I put. Um, there's a lot. Luckily, like it's mounted in a good spot. I don't know if he uses the coin door much. I don't know if this has an accelerometer for like nudge. So it's gonna put me to the test. Again, uh, you know, it is what it is. I'm excited. Definitely excited to get the customer, you know, up running and playing. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot. <laughs> I was gonna end the video, but I said, wait, we gotta actually turn this on and give it a test, so we shall do that. Bluetooth mode. Bluetooth mode. We got power. I would assume I have to lift this up and uh, hit the power button. The audio amps are saying something. This actually has a nice thing where it's like rubber feet, so that's pretty cool. And the PC is not on. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now I'm I mean there was a there was a power switch here. Does this have the on? There it goes. So we're on the right HDMI. So there's two, two power switches. That one in the back is granted, it'll probably just stay on. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Windows Vista? Windows Vista? Hundred thousand percent. You're talking VP six or seven. Granted, yes, I don't have a back box plugged in, so maybe you know screens might be jumbled. They, oh, there we go. I was gonna say they probably have it like mine, where it's like thirty seconds to load. 
So Back to the Future, what do we got here? So featuring 906, welcome to Pinball X. Oh, there's no speakers obviously because he didn't give me the speakers. <laughs> Let's just run real quick. Let's just see. Ben 10. I mean, again, I could already tell you. Oh, we could. Uh, this probably has FX3 on it. Let's see how, like. Press start. Let's see if it has the uh, Guns N' Roses. I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but it's one of the exhaust fans that's got to be changed. It's got a weird version of Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters Slimer. Can you hear that? Yeah, the main exhaust here, it's not even spinning like these. So that's got to get changed unless you're going to hear that annoying sound. Let's run some Ghostbusters. Press start button. And also, I'm running this also because maybe we could see if the uh, Cleveland stuff is hooked up. I mean, we saw Matrix light up. I only see one RAM stick, it's actually glued in. There's your DOF. JP Salas. Now the big thing with Cleveland is that apparently if you hold down the flip button, it should release or it's not... I'm holding it. I thought his thing like released. So the plunger is like... This is cool. At least in this in this video, again, you could hear the start, the 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 car starters going off. It's got a thump. You could feel it in the cabinet. I'm not a fan of the placement for it, but I'm just trying to also hear. I only hear like. Does this have nudge? No. So no accelerometer unless it's just not programmed. Yeah, see, all right, so the solenoids are working. Like that, for example, would have been like left middle. Um, it works. And honestly, for, for Cleveland to get it to work is interesting, but also notice, and again, this is how dated it is, there's no DOF talking to the matrix. That's probably most likely because of the XML from DOF config is not, they, that didn't, we didn't have adjustable matrices on this. But you can just see like the, you can see the ball, so I don't know. Again, I'm not, I don't think I have a 60 hertz screen, but it is what it is. It is what it is. I'm trying to even see, like, I don't even see uh, an SSD. I'm pushing the button. That's not. Here's gonna go. That's just number one. You're, looking, you're running on Windows Vista. Again, shout out. Great stuff. Cleveland solenoids worked on this. That, that was uh, impressive. Can't lie to you. But again, we don't have the LED matrix, which is probably one thing where the customer's like, hey, I bought this kit, but it doesn't work. Let's see if, um, I doubt this is, I doubt this is gonna run. Let's run FX3, I mean, I run meaning I doubt it's gonna be, maybe it will, maybe it will work with the solenoids. 
Okay, FX2, FX3 is a... Uh, it's a whole different realm. It's, it's really related to Dolph. So let's just see. Definitely one of the, the fans gotta go. It's making a, a humming sound. Oh. Uh. So now again, if you know FX2, FX3, as you can see right now, the solenoids don't click off. In all honesty, even on my pin though, it takes about 30 seconds for a DOF to connect. That's not a Cleveland design thing, that's just, that's just a, a, a given. But there's no DOF as far as this. I just want to go back, I don't really care about FX2, FX3. Let's run like, let's just see like the Simpsons pinball party. Let's see if um, we can get some LED action. Again, in my idea, it's, I doubt, I doubt it has the XML set up for the adjustable LEDs. HIJ, it's either Simpsons or The Simpsons. So we got South Park, we have probably go to T, Spider-Man. Team, Tales from the Crypt. So Simpsons Pinball Party. Again, no sound because he had speakers. So I don't have the back box here. And not to mention, that's gonna be a problem. Is it gonna be a problem? Surround sound force feedback. He, we don't have the uh, sound card. Unless it's in the pin one, which I doubt. You don't hear anything on this. Uh, start. Some coins in maybe. Keep it coming, keep it coming. I played Simpsons so much. Ah, very nice. So we do have addressable. Cool. So, cool, it, the adjustables are there, so that's a good thing. It's kinda crazy to see his pin one board. Ah. Again, so, cool. I mean, we got, we got, uh, we got adjustables. See, I'm also just purposely just spamming this button to hear the solenoid go off. Look at that, that's, that's early. Ball save, it should have automatically launched. Again, this is just data. This is data GPS. So we'll adjust all of these on. I'm purposely doing that. You think I'm being an asshole, but I'm purposely doing that just to make sure that the car starter keeps going. So again, it's an old PC. Uh, done. This is this is done. You can even just tell by, you know, the the Simpsons. It's not, it's not a VPW. I mean, adjustable is doing some stuff. You know what? Let's exit out real quick. I can't exit out. I can't exit. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to run real quick. Last one and that's it. I'm going to run real quick the getaway. Let's see if the getaway shows the word shift there. Again, awesome. I'm actually very surprised that the adjustables worked uh, with, with, with the game. Now, let's, again, like I said, let's see if this has the getaway. I know the getaway because uh, I know it's, I'm pretty sure there's other games that have words in the matrix, but 
we can at least see this. Um, the humming from the fan is no longer doing it because the fan kicked up speed. So again, I, I'm more. I was more interested to see. I got to see about this address of uh, surround sound force feedback. Is it connected to the board? Let's see. Ah, there you go. All right, we got shift. Cool. All right. Like I said, definitely for the customer, I'm gonna reach out to him. I would definitely wanna add one more matrix uh, thing to it. Definitely, I definitely would wanna do that. Now this also doesn't have a launch button. How am I gonna shift? I would have to pull the plunger. Nauseating. What the fuck is that? There's a random switch here. What is this? Thing? Nothing. All right. Like I said, Matrix working on a dated VPX. It's very, uh, very cool to see. Let's exit out. I'll cut real quick, and I'll tell you what the specs are on this PC. All right, so cranked out my keyboard and mouse, exited the program. This is running a GeForce GT 730. Again, Windows Vista. The crazy thing is that I'm able to enable 4K resolution. SDC controller, disable effect. See now, I have to now, honestly, as a backup, I'm going to keep the computer, obviously. I'll keep it to the side, but I would like, I would be backing up like the DOF config because apparently he he did that. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is Windows Vista, ladies and gentlemen. 119 gigs, only eight gigs of open space available. Let's see real quick. If I go to properties, is this gonna show us the version? This is running VPX 10.6. Again, the 730 is recognizing 4K, 60 hertz. My screen is 60 hertz. I'm gonna take a look also real quick. The date on this, what does it say? It says February 13, 2024, but last modified is 2019. This apparently is running 4K right now. So I did a quick reboot, connected everything. Um, I changed resolution to my 4K, 60 hertz. Uh, I would rather run a table that we did see, so we will run, uh, I was playing The Simpsons, so I'd rather play The Simpsons right now. Again, keep in mind though, definitely this computer needs an update. That is like number one. This computer, this computer needs a big update. 7.30, I don't even see a hard drive in this. <laughs> Oh, here it is. It does have an SSD. It's a no name brand SSD. Let's see real quick now how uh, some 4K, yeah, 4K 60 Hertz. That's what my monitor is. So, maybe I gotta put some coins in. Up top on the top of the table. Oh. Well, I'll tell you one thing, it's definitely smoother. Uh, so, you know, again, 60 hertz, 30 hertz. Still, though, I don't know what the existing, what the existing one was. It's, listen, it's it's much smoother. <laughs> so as you know, if you have the wrong resolution, 30 hertz, you'll see that. Um, but it's still dated. It's still definitely an old thing. I did a quick measurement on this. Um, this is actually probably closer to a wide body. The inside dimensions of this is around 23. 
So we could definitely put a C2, a C3 42 inch OLED on this. I don't think you could do 50. I think 50 is a stretch. My cab right there is 21 and a half. So definitely. The length on this though, he's got 40 and a half. Not really if you minus the, the lockdown bar, because it is a very big lockdown bar. I would probably say he's got about, take away three inches, 40, you got about 37. He could fit a C3 42 inch OLED on this. Um, I would most likely, I'm gonna reach out to him. Um, I would swap these uh, channels out. I don't like it, it's pointed into the TV. It's gonna look awful. Um, I have some spare angles, uh, so he could, honestly, I'll probably give it to him. Uh, and like I said, I'll reach out, what is this? This is just like screwed in. Now my mind goes, the possibility is, uh, is endless on this. So on that note, let's, let's, let's conclude. Well, there you have it. The virtual pinball cabinet from Illinois has landed in New York safe and sound amazingly with that crate job and all that. It's here and it's intact and it's good to go. I already messaged a customer, I told him it's already here, gave him a couple ideas such as adding a matrix, making it longer. That I'll probably have to reach out to Cleveland Design to see how I can make that matrix longer, but I'm pretty sure it's, kind of, it's basically some coding stuff. But I even did ask if he wanted to do a couple of upgrades. You know, again, the flippers, that's gotta go. Those buttons, that's awful. That's just not pinball. You need ma you need the actual uh, leaf switches. Uh, I am also at looking to see if I could add a shaker motor and some underglow LEDs along with RGB flippers. So it's something that I mentioned to a customer and he said, Vic, you got the green light, do it if you can. So I gotta kind of study that again. I right now, tomorrow, that will be gutted. But basically stay tuned for more V-Pin stuff. Brad's Bros V-Pin, that's such a thing to say. Brad's Bros V-Pin is almost done. Uh, you'll have my video, my personal V-Pin and such. And then we're going back to the four player rail mounted gun build. Uh, basically PC is set up for that. We just gotta start building the cabinet. But yes, there you guys have it. On that note, Vic VP. Game case arcades. I love what I do. Pinball, baby. That's where it's at. <laughs>